So uh, polycythemia vera is one of the Philadelphia chromosome negative myeloproliferative neoplasms. It's a family of diseases that originate at the level of the pluripotent stem cell. Um, and it um, essentially involves a number of driver mutations, including JAK2V617F mutations in MIPL, which is the receptor for thrombopoietin, and also mutations in calreticulin. These Philadelphia chromosome negative myeloproliferative neoplasms include essential thrombocythemia, polycythemia vera, which is the subject of today's discussion, and also primary myelofibrosis. These are chronic hematologic malignancies that can persist for, uh, for, for decades, actually, based upon the severity of the disease. These malignancies are associated not only with the driver mutations, but also with uh, cytogenetic abnormalities and a variety of additional myeloid malignancy gene mutation. The patients with polycythemia vera usually present with thrombotic episodes or are just serendipitously discovered during routine uh, uh, physical examination or doctor visits. Patients characteristically, especially young females, present with thrombotic episodes uh, occurring within the abdominal cavity or within, um, or as deep venous thromboses, pulmonary emboli, uh, transient ischemic attacks, cerebral vascular incidents, um, acute myocardial infarction, or actually can just present with systemic symptoms such as itching associated with, with showering, which is called aquagenitis. Um, the patients also uh, characteristically uh, experience fatigue um, and sometimes uh, decreased mental acuity. The la characteristic laboratory findings, the hallmark is really an elevated hematocrit, um, which is associated, uh, which is the cardinal feature, and then Frequently, the patients have more modest elevation of their white count and or platelet count. Um, on physical examination, the patients really have a ruddy complexion. They have uh, injected con conjunctiva. About 30 to 40% of them will have an increased spleen as detected on physical examination. The criteria for uh, diagnosis are really best defined by the World Health Organization which include an elevated hematocrit, usually 48 um, in uh, females and 49 in males. Um, they have a, a presence of a JAK2V617F mutation in the majority of patients. And some individuals uh, have an alternative mutation in JAK2, which is located at exon 12. In those patients that do not fulfill that criteria, a bone marrow biopsy is required, which shows the erythroid hyperplasia that are characterized by these patients, in addition to megakaryocytic hyperplasia, which is seen in each of the myeloproliferative neoplasms. In some instances where diagnosis is difficult, uh, sometimes we resort to measuring the serum erythropoietin levels, that are usually less than five. Uh, units per milliliter. Um, those criteria are really important for diagnoses uh, on entry into clinical um, trials, but can be very, very useful making these diagnoses in, in the clinic. There are also patients, for instance, who have uh, these driver mutations that are only discovered as a um, after a thrombotic event has occurred. For instance, like in a young female who might prevent, present with hepatic vein thrombosis or cerebral sinus thrombosis, those patients can have normal uh, blood counts. And then uh, it is retrospectively determined that these people have a JAK2617 mutation. That, that really represents, that thrombotic event really represents a form frus of this myeloproliferative neoplasm. And uh, as they are followed over time, a, sub a substantial number of these patients go on to develop 
a clinical phenotype that's associated with polycythemia vera. These patients are currently man managed on a risk basis. Basically, a number of stratification schema have been set up to essentially determine those patients that are at the highest risk of developing thrombotic episodes. These patients, I must say, have also the risk of evolving over time to myelofibrosis or to a, a form of acute leukemia called MPN blast phase or myeloproliferative neoplasm blast phase. That usually occurs over, uh, over a decade or so, but can occur more rapidly. We presently do not have an effective therapy that essentially prevents progression of the disease. So the treatment is all predicated on preventing uh, risk of thrombosis, of additional thrombotic events. So those patients that are thought to be high risk patients or those patients who are over age 60 or have had a prior thrombotic event, that is like a deep vein thrombosis or a pulmonary embolism or an acute myocardial infarction, or who has a transient ischemic attacks, um, intermediate or, or, or um, intermediate risk patients are those patients that are, have um, either age 60 and have um, cardiovascular risk factors that all of you are familiar with. And low risk patients are those patients that don't have a prior thrombosis and um, are below age 60. The therapy, one symptom that I forgot to mention to you is something called erythromyalgia, which I think is an important symptom for you to look out for. And that is uh, patients can frequently uh, present with um, redness in the palms and soles of their feet. This is um, due to platelet aggregation or aggregates in small vessels. This is frequently painful. And characteristically, this symptom goes um, is relieved by aspirin therapy and is not uh, relieved by correction of the pneumatic uh, to below 45%. Um, characteristically, these patients also have relief of their pain by walking on cold floors. So that's uh, kind of a clinical uh, nugget that you can use in your, in your practice.